I went on over to Instagram and I asked you guys, what is it that you want to know about the Mac team? So I'm going to answer seven questions here in this video. I'll even answer a few fun ones over on my Instagram channel. So make sure that you're following me there. So let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Question number one, what is MAC and why do you do it? How does it help kids? Well, MAC stands for multi-age classroom, but please don't go ahead and click off of this video yet. I promise you are a MAC teacher. We are all MAC teachers and I'm gonna go into that in a little bit. So tell me if this sounds familiar. There was one afternoon I was sitting around with my sixth grade vertical team teacher and we were having a conversation about how we were both teaching the exact same curriculum. And I was a fourth grade teacher and she was a sixth grade teacher for ELA. And that's when we realized that something needed to change because a child's age does not represent their grade level. And so we knew that with multi-age, it would really help us to be able to meet the needs of our learners but we wanted to take it a little bit further. We really wanted to incorporate project-based learning, real world experiences. We wanted to build that community and get kids to see the value of what we were learning in the classroom to the outside world. You also asked about how does it help kids and the MAC team is built to really meet the needs of each individual learner. But what we also do is really help them to see the value and the importance of what we're learning and making those connections outside to the real world. We want to bring in as many real experiences for these kids as possible, focusing on those 21st century skills to really make it a point that, hey, if you need to learn how to make phone calls to outside businesses, that's what we're going to focus on. If you need to be able to articulate uh, what is it that you're learning, we're going to help you be able to do that. And we also focus on really building those passions and those interests within the classroom. All right, so question number two, is it possible to run a multi-age classroom such as a combo class effectively with only one teacher? So a K-1 combo. Absolutely. You are a multi-age teacher already. We are all multi-age teachers, and this is the point that I want to drive home. Think about your classrooms right now. Think about the levels of your students, where they are academically. You're going to have those kids that are right on grade level. You're going to have those kids who are below grade level, maybe working one or two possibly grades below grade level. And then you have those kids that are really striving and they just soak up everything that you teach them and they're above grade level. So when you're thinking about it, you are already doing what I am doing in my classroom. You are already trying to hit those needs of those kids that are in your rooms by teaching them what they need to learn. So can it happen? Absolutely. So as I go along in this video, you're going to find some, hopefully some tips and some strategies that will really help you in seeing how to implement this into your own classroom. Question number three, how do you and your partners decide what teacher will teach? Is it based on standards? Yes, it is based on standards. Uh, and we decided very early on that we all wanted to teach all subjects. We also decided that we did not want to have a specific high, medium, low teacher. So not one of us is considered the fourth grade, the fifth grade, or the sixth grade teacher. So at some point in the day, we all wanted to see all three grade levels to really focus on building that relationship and to build that community with all of our kids and not just like one specific crop of kids. So in order to do this, we took three things under consideration. The rate at which our learners are, are learning, the explicit instruction or the amount of explicit instruction that they need, and finally, are they learning to read or are they in that moment, that time period where they're reading to learn? So those were the big components that we looked at when we were splitting our kids up. We also had to look at our students' strengths and their weaknesses because as teachers, we know that learners can be really strong in one subject area and not so strong in another. So that gave us the opportunity to be able to move our kids around a little bit more. Okay, so question number four, how do you manage the workload preparing for so many different grades? 
this is a long one. <laughs> well, it's important to know that the structure of my team is built off of small groups. Uh, and it's also really important to know that I do not teach all three grade levels for each subject area. This is where my partners come in uh, and that allows me to not be spread so thin. For example, I teach a one fifth grade math group, I have one sixth grade ELA group, and then I have one fourth grade ELA group. For content, all three teachers have a mixture of four fifth and sixth grade learners, and we all teach the exact same material at the exact same time. And this is partly because we don't assess it, we don't have to grade it, so this is just uh, providing our learners with an enrichment time. We also worked really, really hard in creating a progression for each unit in each subject area. This is what a lot of you would consider to be a curriculum that has either been written by your district or purchased by your district. We also have one night every two weeks where we stay together as a team. We discuss our progressions, we discuss our units that we're going to be teaching, we discuss our learners at that time. Every day during the day we have about a 20 minute period where we have an opportunity to discuss where our learners are and what we need to be working on changing as we go along through our days. Morning times are always there if we need to use those morning times, but I think the biggest thing that you have to remember is that collaboration is so very important. It allows us to make sure that none of our learners are being left behind, that we are also making sure that we're on the same page, and finally that we're holding each other and also our learners accountable in the end. Question number five, how do you manage the different ages without anyone falling behind? So you mentioned ages, and on the Mac team, ages don't exist. Uh, it's important to know that when we think about our Mac team, we look at our whole learner and we focus on what are the skills that they need in order to be successful once they leave our team. And so I want you to think of it from that aspect. As I mentioned in the last question, we maintain that constant communication between my team teachers. And in those cases where we feel like learners are truly falling, falling behind, we have something set called power standards. And this is made by my district. And what power standards allows us to do is it allows us to look at those skills that are absolutely critical for our learners in order to move on to the next grade levels. An example of this would be in a fifth grade or fourth grade addition and a subtraction unit, estimation is one of those skills that's really, really difficult and sometimes also something that requires a, a little more developmental cognitive awareness. And so for kids, that might not be our focus. For those learners who are truly behind, I'm gonna make sure that they have the addition and subtraction and know that estimation is something that I'm gonna to continue to work on, but not something that I'm going to absolutely say they have to have. So question number six, how do you and your teammates balance working smoothly with each other? <laughs> So from the very beginning, my team got together and this was before the Mac team was even up and running and we planned out every little detail from how are we going to communicate with parents? How do we want to store our materials? And then how are we going to deal with specific behavior management issues? And so we wanted to make sure that before the program got running, we were all on the exact same page. And for the past two years until now, we handle any concerns or disagreements on during our daily meetings. And this is just a time for us to get together and really just be able to listen to each other's perspectives. And I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's true. We understand that we're all adults. We're gonna have disagreements. We're gonna see things a little bit differently. But if we take the time to really listen to each other's perspectives, we come to some sort of a compromise because at the end, we realize that what we are doing with our team is for our kids. It's the last question. <laughs> okay, uh, question number seven. How would you like to develop what you've already got? Guys, this is where like I am so unbelievably excited. Uh, we are preparing for our third year. Next year is our third year in this program. So our fourth graders, the babies that kind of started this program have gone all the way through and they're gonna be graduating. It's kind of crazy to believe it's really sad as a teacher. Uh, but it gets me excited because we have such a fantastic foundation for this team already. Our structures are in place, our routines, our transitions, everything that took a while to figure it out in the very beginning, we now understand how it's working for us and how to make it work for us. 
So this is where we now have this opportunity to really build on what we wanted this team to be in the first place. And that is making those real world connections, focusing on those 21st century skills, and really making sure that we are hitting our kids at their level and their need. So to answer your question, really, it's to get our kids to be able to connect with community members and to connect with individuals all around the world, to get them to see their passions and to build on those passions, to allow them to grow in those 21st century skills, to help them set goals for themselves and the importance of setting those goals and making new ones to help them continuously grow as learners. So overall, I am just so excited about where this program is heading. I'm glad that we've kind of taken these first two years to set that foundation. And I think that you guys are going to see some great things coming from our kids in the next few years. So what do you guys think? Like, what do you think about the Mac team overall? Do you start to kind of see some of these um, aspects of what I'm doing in my classroom that kind of relate to what you're doing? Uh, are there strategies and skills, ideas there that you can see, hey, this might actually work for what I'm doing? Or are you a little bit curious on how you can make this work for your school? Because to be honest, my entire school is still departmentalized. We are the only three teachers in our school that's running as a MAC team. Everybody else still has their typical departmentalized classrooms. But I guarantee you that some of the things that we're doing in, in our MAC team, our other teachers in our school are already starting to implement some of those ideas. So I'm totally curious. Share them down below, guys. Let me know what you think about this idea of a multi-H program. I'm very curious. I think it has some really great benefits, and I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on that. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to support the channel. Give the video a thumbs up, uh, and I will see you all next time. Bye.